Hey everybody, so today I want to talk about this concept of synthetic versus real data. And this is a big subject of debate that comes up a lot. And so I just, up front, I want to clarify that oftentimes what I particularly use is a what's called a synthetic blend of data. So to me, what I have found is uh, the best for training models for my purposes overall is to take real data and uh, blend it up and then chop it into um, more like readable pieces uh, for AI models. And, and I kind of dissect it that way. I've heard this debate framed in a really good context. I think this is the best context that I've heard. And then so I'm going to flat out like steal the, the phrase that I've heard, which is that AI is lossy like just like jpegs are lossy it's a lossy format ai is a lossy format meaning that when ai stores information it stores the patterns of information right so um let's take a sentence the, like a sentence that i use quite often for ai the cat sat on the mat like the ai is going to interpret and, and store the patterns of the cat sat on the mat Maybe it strips the and on, right? Because it, it strips those and the on, because it doesn't need those. So it's cat, set, map, and that's all it needs. And then, but so that's lossy, right? That's uh, compressing the, the sentence. And then so uh, when you get deeper, like when you do that more and more often, it loses the meaning of it. And then so this concept of lossiness when it comes to words is a kind of a new concept for people, right? And then so for me, I've been playing around a lot as well with swarm algorithms. And then so uh, I have developed an algorithm like it's a swarm algorithm that can uh, create words, but the problem is, and recreate words, but the problem is when it recreates words, it recreates them lossy, right? Like, cause it's, so I can have a, a fitness score. And then, so let's say that the word itself is a fitness score of zero. Uh, I will always like the, the model will never get to zero. It will get to like minus one or plus two or minus two, even around there, but it's never going to get to zero. And then, so if I take a word like lossless, uh, the end result could be like um, L L S L L E S E, something like that, right? And then so it's like 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 not all the way there because it's lossy, uh, and that's what happens with word compression. And like it's it's a we this is a concept we don't think about a lot, but like this is literally what is going on with the models is that they're compressing that information and and, and that data, and then so talking about that subject overall and diving deeper into this, there's scenarios where it's okay to do that and then there's scenarios where it's definitely not okay to do that. And then to me, once you get into the data, the data science of it, it's pretty straightforward in general. Like there's general rules. Like think of this like English, right? Like these are, this is general rules, but then there's exceptions to every rule. So giving you up front here, the general rule around this is, is that there's two categories of data when it comes to data analytics and data science. You have quantitative data and qualitative data. And then generally speaking, I, it, it's more okay to have lossy data, so more synthetic qualitative data, and you don't want synthetic quantitative data. And then that's, I mean, that's, again, these are general rules of thumb, right? And then so quantitative data is countable or measurable relating to numbers, tells us how many, how much, or how often. It's fixed and universal, factual, gathered by measuring and counting things and analyzed using statistical analysis. I mean, to me, this is pretty straightforward, this differentiation, right? But then I do, like, I, I have uh, also, like, I studied rhetoric and communication, so, like, th this is very uh, intuitive to me overall, so it might not be for uh, most people, but, like, anything that falls into the math realm when you're dealing with data, like math, calculations, facts, hard, deterministic data, deterministic data is quantitative. Qualitative is descriptive, relating to words and language, it describes certain attributes and helps to understand the why or how behind certain behaviors. Dynamic and subjective, open to interpretation, gathered through observations and interviews, analyzed by grouping the data into meaningful themes or categories. 
how people feel, what, uh, descriptions of people, uh, philosophy, anything that social studies, like anything that falls under these realms, that's more qualitative data, right? Like where it's, you want the, the core, the core of it is what matters. The, the rest of it is around it is a lot more fluff. And then you can strip away that fluff. Like it's okay to be lossy, like to, to cut away 10% away of the fluff because you just want the core, right? Uh, and then so within that, like that type of data, it's much more okay to have lossy data in that format. Giving like a real world example of like situations that I, I'm going through and I've kind of gone through like a lot is uh, like, um, so let's say spreadsheet data, right? Like uh, data within your organization that, that's like tracking specifically uh, actions. You have a knowledge base and you have uh, different keywords and categories and descriptions and all of that. And you want it, the, the uh, AI model to match and use like, for example, the descriptions and the keywords of, and all of that, that's all quantitative data. And that's all like, you do not want synthetic data in that area. Like you're going to have a very bad time if you create synthetic data in that category. Whereas if you're looking for knowledge base articles uh, for your database, uh, looking for information on specific systems, on procedures, things like that, you can synthetic data that all day long. And then you want to measure that and monitor that, right? And then there's different, there are, uh, when we go into uh, data quality, there's different levels of data on both of these sides as well, right? So there's good quantitative data and bad qualitative, da quantitative data, as well as good qualitative data and bad qualitative data. And then so like there's different levels and, and you can break this all down further, but this gives you just that general overview of, gen and again, there's exceptions to these rules, just like the English language, there's exceptions to every rule. But so in general, quantitative data stay away from synthetic qualitative data that's where you want to get more okay into synthetic overall my general approach is, is to never go 100 percent. Don't, don't go full synthetic right like uh we want synthetic blend like we want we want to blend the oil and we want to blend the synthetic like a 50 50 blend is good uh the, the more you get away from 50 50 blend the more like uh lossy your data is going to get overall and then so that's kind of just the key concepts to keep in mind and then so you it's always a balancing act because corporations and businesses overall in general and anyone in general like you they the problem is always not enough data so like you're going to at some point have to manufacture data but what you're going to want to do is spend all of your research time on your quantitative data and then that manufacturing time on the qualitative data uh, and then garbage in garbage out if your ai model is kind of stupid at the end of the day once you train it it's because you get a kind of stupid data and that's i mean there's nothing that can fix that uh, and then so if you like this type of content please like and subscribe thank you very much